A Sonic Christmas Fable, How Shadow the Hedgehog Stole Christmas by NZ17. A parody of and homage to How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Dr. Seuss. Every Mobian down in the Chow Garden liked Christmas a lot, but Shadow, who lived just north of the Chow Garden, did not. Shadow hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why, no one quite knows the reason. It could be that his only friend wasn't treated right. It could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all might have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his past, he stood there on Christmas Eve, hating to the last, staring down from his cave with a sour, dark frown at the warm, lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every chow down in the chow garden beneath was busy now hanging a chow drive wreath. And they're hanging their wee booties, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas, it's practically here. Then he growled with his shadowy fingers nervously drumming. I must find a way to keep Christmas from coming. For tomorrow he knew all the chow girls and boys would wake up bright and early. They'd rush for their toys and then, oh, the noise. Their play would bring such noise. That's the one thing he hated, the noise, no matter their joys. The Chow, Nitopians, and more would sit down to a feast, and they'd eat in all directions, northwest, south, and east. They would start on Chow pudding and rare marshmallows, which was something Shadow couldn't stand among those fellows. And then they'd do something he liked least of all. Every Chow down in the Chow garden, the hero in the dark, would stand and gather with Christmas bells down in the park. They'd stand hand in hand, and the chow would start singing. They'd sing and they'd ring the noise going jing ding. And the more shadow thought of the chow Christmasing, the more shadow thought I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years I've put up with it now. I must stop Christmas from coming, but how? Then he got a thought. Such a gleeful thing. An awful idea that would halt any sing. I know just what to do, Shadow laughed in his throat, and he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat, and he chuckled and clucked, what a great shadowy trick with this coat and this hat, I'll look just like Saint Nick. All I need is a reindeer. Shadow looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop old Shadow? No, no, Shadow simply said, if I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called Dog Mutsky. Then he took some red thread and he tied a big horn on top of old Mutsky's head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh and then he told Musky away. Then Shadow yelled, hurry now! Rushing without pardon toward the homes where the chow lay a snooze in their garden. All their windows were dark. Quiet snow filled the air. All the chow were all dreaming sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first house down in the square, this is stop number one, the old shadowy claws hissed. And he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his gloved fist. Then he slid down the chimney, snug and oh so, but if Santa could do it, then so could Shadow. He got stuck only once for a moment or two, then he stuck his head out of the fireplace blue. Where the little chow booties all hung in a row, these booties, he grinned, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant. Around the whole room, he took every present. Fun guns and vehicles, cameras, drums, checkerboards, various fruits, popcorn, and plums. And he stuffed them into bags, and Shadow very nimbly stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then he slunk to the icebox, he took the food with some bellows. He took the chow pudding, he took the marshmallows. He cleaned out that icebox as quick as a flash. Why, that shadow even took their last can of chow hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee, and now, Grand Shadow, I'll steal away the tree. And Shadow grabbed the tree, and he started to shove when he heard a small sound like the puff of a glove. He turned around fast and he saw widened eyes, Cream the rabbit whose face showed sudden surprise. Shadow had been caught by this little bunny daughter, 
had gotten out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at Shadow and said, Dear sir, why? Surely you're not a tree-taking guy. But you know, that old Shadow was so smart, so slick. He thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. Oh, my sweet little tot. The fake Santa Claus lied. There's a chow drive on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, you see. I'll fix it up there, and then I'll bring back your dear tree. And as Fib fooled the child, he patted her head. Then he got her a drink and he sent her to bed. And when Cream the Rabbit went to bed with her cup, Shadow went to the chimney and took that tree up. Then the last thing he took was the wood for their fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old dark liar. On their walls all he left was nothing but hooks and wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a needle mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other Mobians' houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other needle mouses. It was quarter past dawn, all the Mobians still abed, all the chow still a snooze when he packed up his sled, packed it up with their gifts, the cables, the wrappings, the tags, and the consoles, the games, all the trappings. Three thousand feet up the side of Gimmick Mountain, he rode to the tip-top where it crests like a fountain. Poo-poo to the chow, he was shadowishly humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up, I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open for a minute or two. Then all the chow down in the chow garden will cry boo-hoo. That's a noise, Grin Shadow, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and Shadow put a hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, and then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, the sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was very quite merry. He stared down at the chow garden. He rubbed his eyes. He had such surprise, such shock, though his heart was hardened. Every chow down in the chow garden, Mobians and the small, were singing, singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming, it came. Somehow or other it came just the same. And Shadow, with his aching feet, ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without cartridges, it came without CDs, it came without downloads, cards, nor DVDs. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then Shadow thought of something he hadn't before. Perhaps Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Perhaps, just perhaps, Christmas means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Spring Valley, they say, that Shadow's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his chaos control down to the garden in the warmth of the morning light. He brought back the toys, the wraps, the games, and the food, and he, that fine fellow, that remarkable dude, yes, the change and renewed shadow, now different in such grand ways, served the nicest of food and the rarest of marshmallows that day. The end.